One of the first shots, and perhaps the biggest in the battle for the White House, is fired not in the caucuses, not in the primaries, but right here in the Florida legislature. It's HB 1355, a bill to be entitled an act relating to elections. And it is fired with a silencer. If we don't take action... Quietly and far from the national limelight, Florida's Republican-led legislature debates House Bill 1355. Representative Baxley, final debate. For everybody to walk in on election day and just attest that they live somewhere, and folks, that's just not right. It is a bill that makes 80 changes to Florida's election law. One change makes registering voters harder for community groups who typically reach out more to minorities. These groups must turn in registration forms within 48 hours or face $1,000 fines. False registration can lead to even higher fines and up to five years in prison. Accountability hurts. It's never comfortable. Another change sharply reduces early voting days, which are more popular with minorities than with whites. Just look at the rules and play by the rules. And still another forces some people who move to vote provisional ballots, which more often affect minorities and students. One of the things that I think was really going wrong is the opportunity for local elections to be displaced or stolen by just people coming in and moving their address. All of this in the name of preventing voter fraud. Every single time this fraud is allowed to occur in Florida, your right to vote and my right to vote is degraded. Bill 1355 is going to create an undue hardship on minority voters in the state of Florida in addition to the elderly and poor and rural voters who will also be disadvantaged by it. If we have a razor-thin election in Florida, and Florida's votes are decisive for the Electoral College outcome, then these changes in the rules could determine who the next president is. On Representative Baxley's motion, members will proceed to vote. 77 yeas, 38 nays, Mr. Speaker. So the bill passes. You are subject to the 2011 version of the law that went into effect May 19, 2011. I have not done one in this new process, but I have to start sometime. December the 2nd, I'm going to see what I can find. How's everybody? Don't stop because you see me coming. I don't think I met you. Are you a registered voter? When did you register? LaVon is a foot soldier. Where did you move from? Mississippi. Oh, yes. You have to be able to vote here. She's been a foot soldier for a long time, and uh, she does what needs to be done. Fill this out for me. I have been working for 35, 40 years as it relates to voter registration, getting people excited about voting. And as time passes, it is more and more difficult. I think I have two right now. I'm gonna do five. This is where I turn in all my uh, registrations. Do I need to put my number on the absentee ballot? No, no, just on the application. Okay. I know that I have to be very careful in what I'm doing. Turn it in within the 48 hours from the date the day you had the registration, 48 hours. So every time I do one, mm -hmm. I need to then put my number on there and uh -huh. put the time. Mistakes are costly now. You have to put it on each one. You know, I've been doing this for 20 years, and now they're just making it difficult. Bracey, who works solo, isn't backing down from the threat of penalties. Thank, Thank you, you for having me. Thank you. But others, even Florida's nonpartisan League of Women Voters, stopped registering voters in the state. Five years in jail. $5,000 in fine, third-degree felonies. It is going to be almost impossible to find volunteers who would be willing to do that. The League of Women Voters and other groups provide a, an outreach to these populations. African Americans are going to have a more difficult time registering to vote because they won't have as many opportunities to do so. So black folks have had to deal with barrier after barrier for years. There were poll taxes before, there were literacy tests before, now you're having to deal with the newest form, and that is fines when it comes to registering people. 
you know I'm married to a poor preacher. I cannot <laughs> afford to go to jail, and neither can I afford to pay a fine. Yes, ma'am. This is a Sunday morning. We're about to have worship service. My wife, who's been a champion for voter empowerment for a long time in the 2008 election, she single-handedly registered more than 1,200 people. Me, my bride, 38 years ago. Good afternoon, the Covenant. Yeah. What Tallahassee, your legislature, wants you to do is not vote in 2012. And they don't want people like me to inform you of the changes that have been made. I remember my dad said, listen, you must vote. So if you haven't voted, put your hand up with everybody else's hand. And let's, let's assume you're just changing your address. But we need you to fill out a voter registration form. From 18 to 6 to 3, I have never missed an opportunity to vote. If you don't vote, you will not have a voice. There are people who died for you to have the right to vote. We will register to vote because as citizens of these United States, we have the right to do it. For the cries of pain and the hymns and protests of oppressed people, systematic and ingenuous discrimination. With the outrage of Selma still fresh, enacted one of the most monumental laws in the entire history of American freedom to ensure the right to vote. The signature and the day's date. I'm ready for the challenge. I'm just not going to let Tallahassee win this one. And you're starting now? I'm starting now. 30.